Hey YouTube, it's Sean Griffin RC Planes. So the signal between your transmitter and your receiver. You got your Spectrum transmitter, you got your E-Flight bind and fly airplane that has a Spectrum receiver. Let me show you how to understand the signal between the two. Heaven forbid you ever have an oopsie, don't turn your transmitter off until you look at the flight log screen. The flight log screen will let you know what may have happened. This A, F, and H are all different types of, of signals, and you can have so many A's and then so many F's to equal a hold. You don't want to hold. Stay away from the holds. And here, I'll show you how to understand everything about your signal so you can have the best outcome and enjoy this awesome hobby. Hey YouTube, it's Sean, Griffin RC Planes. So happy, uh, I guess, uh, the first week and a half of November. Yeah, happy that. I went to a RC swap meet yesterday and uh, that was the first one I've ever been to. That was really cool. That was like the, uh, the candy store. We finally found it. And I bought all kinds of junk. And I'll do another video on a spread of everything I got Everything I got from the swap meet, it, uh, it'll probably fill this whole table up of different knickknacks. Some cool stuff, just some stuff just to have, stuff to use, stuff got a great deal on it. Like the uh, Spectrum USB program cable, one buck. And it was still wrapped up in the in the package. You can tell it had never been opened because the wires were like perfectly wrapped up. So, you know, found a, found a good deal. I scored on that. I got these two little UMXs for 40 bucks. Pretty good. And all kinds of stuff. So hey, I want to show you guys how to change the the signal strength percentage so you can see a bit of my tongue. So you can see the percentage between your transmitter and your receiver. And that will be a be kind of useful and helpful. You know, then as you're flying, you might see uh whatever your percentage normally is, let's say it's 98. And then one day if you start to fly and you look down and it says 70, then hmm, something's up. Might need to check this out before I uh before I take off. A friend of mine and I have been having a conversation about how he might have a either a transmitter or a receiver issue. Maybe the antenna broke inside or something. I don't know. And that gave me the thought to uh, to show everybody just how to be able to see the percentage, your uh, your signal strength. And uh, I guess uh, without uh, further ado, to the screen of the old NX. Hang tight, tight. Not a UMX. This is the test demonstration plane that uh, this winter we're going to make tons and tons and tons of videos on. But right now i got the NX bound up to it so I can show you some cool little telemetry features. So most likely every receiver that you guys are using has a flight log built into it, just some more software. If you happen to be using an older receiver such as this AR6110, this one does not have a flight log inside of it. The older, older, older receivers that don't have a flight log, such as that one, then you could purchase a flight log and plug it into your receiver. And now you would have a flight log to be able to see on the screen of your transmitter. The flight log is your signal strength. All of the transmitters with a screen, except for the DX6i, have the capability of doing what I'm about to show you. So everything but the DX6i that has a screen can do the flight log and see the signal strength. A flight log is a good little piece of a a little piece of info for you to keep track of your of your planes and and how they've been flying and how's the signal and so on. All right, okay, we're bound up to our test plane. You see the little smiley face? That's our throttle. Yes, any transmitter with a screen minus the DX6i has, a, has the telemetry to be able to see the flight log. All right, we're bound up to our airplane. You must be bound up, and you need to have a couple feet between your transmitter and your airplane to get the best signal. That goes the same with binding. If you're ever having a trouble binding and you're like really close, back up a couple feet and try it again. So we're connected, we got control of our airplane. We're gonna to go to the telemetry screen. And down here in the bottom right is flight log. And that's where it takes a log of your flight as far as the signals go. So we have the frames, holds, and the signal. The holds, you never, ever, ever want to have a hold. Frames, you can have a, a bunch of them. 
where I fly is somewhat in the country and when I'm there when there's no sports going on I might have four or five uh, frames or people call them fades sometimes when I fly in the Kroger parking lot I've had you know a hundred frames or fades so this is kind of going to depend on your area amount of people you know everybody's got a cell phone and so on so down here where it says signal now I don't know what a, um, a now I don't know what a DBM is and maybe you know what a DBM is but I know if I take my cursor down here and I crank that guy to the left I get a percentage and I know what percentages are and then 100 is over there so let's change that to as low as it'll go so now we can set up an alarm to go off if our signal goes below the 30 percent the 30 percent is the lowest it will go so let's have our warning go off if it gets to 30. so now we've changed it from whatever a dbm is to a percentage and let's back on completely out and roll the scroll wheel to to get to the telemetry or flight log screen on the transmitter and we can see our SSI is 100 so we're 100 percent connected right now and let's go over here to uh to the range test or we can see some other other good uh, information I probably just passed it up and we can see that the signal the DBMs are still there but over to the right we got 100 percent 100 percent Okay, so on the range test uh, option here, we can see that we have this A, B, L, R, and F and H. Depending on your receiver, it may or may not utilize some of these letters. In our case, case this A stands for fades on the main receiver. So here we are on our uh, range test, and we have our letters here. On the AR631, we have the A, F, and the H. So the A stands for fades on a receiver. And then F for frame loss and H for holds. I'll let you read this stuff on your own. But basically, you can have a certain amount of fades. And then a certain amount of fades become a frame loss. And a certain amount of frame losses become a hold. So we got like warning one, warning two, and then the bad. So this is how we can monitor all of our signals. And there we go. So we can see that our RSSI is 100% still. So we still have 100% percent i got i got a cookie pan here i want to put in front of the transmitter and see if it does anything with the rssi and it doesn't let's go back here to the to the uh, range test and we still have a hundred percent uh receiver signal but this dbm is bouncing back and forth i'll put the cookie sheet in front of between the plane and the and the airplane. When I walk away, I, I walk downstairs and almost outside. Just a cool little little science experiment right there. In the telemetry screen, one more time. Down here, the flight log. You can have a status reports. That's pretty good to uh. That's pretty good to have, huh? Warning reports. Good things to have turned on. But change the DBM to a percentage. Those are numbers that, uh, that we know. All right, I walked outside, guys. I went downstairs and outside to the opposite side of the house. And you can see that the signal strength is definitely changing and I'm not pressing the button we're still in full power so I'm downstairs and, and I'm in the backyard those are numbers that we can understand instead of this DBM I don't know what a DBM is so I came back in from outside and our A has a 6 next to it so going downstairs now back it has changed things so the A you know stands for fades on the main receiver and then we have the f and the h and the f is frame losses and the h is holds 
a certain amount of fades and then a certain amount of fades become a frame loss and a certain amount of frame losses become a hold. So we got like warning one, warning two, and then the bad. These UMX has got numbers on them, one and two. So I wonder if a certain RC club was using these uh, maybe for training or something. You know, they were numbered. They probably had radios or transmitters to go with it or something. I don't know. The, uh, the swap meet was really cool. It was really, really, really cool. All right, so hey, that's all I got for this one. Just a little tidbit to help people out. And uh, maybe you already knew this. Maybe you didn't. Who knows? And I guess that's all I got. So hey, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And make sure you're still subscribed. The comments, the thumbs up, all that. just It really helps out the YouTube algorithm. And that's what... Uh, that's the best way to support me. You know, we're not selling screwdrivers or hats or bumper stickers. We're just uh, you clicking the old like button, leaving a comment. And uh, at 20,000 subscribers, we'll do a three jet giveaway. We could do that in five days if everybody has subscribed that watches this the next couple days. That's uh, it could be done sooner than later. So, anyways, hey, I appreciate it. Happy flying. And uh, until next time, you'll see me here. Aren't these things cool? Oh, they each had a battery in them as well.